Ma Abadea na maeneo mengine ambayo tumeona yakishuhudia hali ya maporomoko ya ardhi kwa hiyo angalivu zaidi na hatimaye tunatarajia kwamba wale ambao wanaishi katika nchi yetu ya Kenya huenda labda pia wakaona maji mengi zaidi na ambayo huenda ikazua athari mbalimbali ni hayo tu kwa sasa asante thank you well you have heard from the rainmakers i just want to appeal to you and to appeal to the entire country and to all Kenyans to heed and take very seriously the warnings by the Met. And secondly, as Wangari Madai said, nature is unforgiving. You destroy nature at your peril. So as we look at how to deal with this situation in our hands, the long-term solution is to respect nature, to promote nature, protect our environment, reforest our degraded areas. Let's take environment very, very seriously. We seem always to think about environment when we have disasters, emergencies. Climate change is real. It is no longer a matter for debate. Let's be cautious, let's be keen, and let's promote uh, a pro a respect for the environment and nature. I invite now my colleague, uh, C.S. Wamalwa, to um, address you. Thank you. Asante sana waziri Tobiko. Tulikuwa hapa tare ishirini na wakati huo tulitoa ilani kwa wakenya sababu ya mvua inayoendelea kunyesha na wahenga walisema mbiu ya mgambo ikilia kuna neno leo tena tumerudi hapa sababu tumeelezwa na wataalamu ya kwamba tunaenda kuwa na mvua zaidi na hii mvua itasababisha mafuriko sehemu za magharibi mwa Kenya bonde la ziwa Victoria bonde la Ufa kaskazini mwa Kenya na pia maeneo ya pwani wakati tulikuwa hapa tukahimiza watu waweze kuhamia sehemu ambazo watakuwa salama wakati huo tulikuwa tumepoteza wa Kenya 116 waliokuwa wamepoteza maisha yao juzi nimekuwa kule Budalangi siku mbili zilizopita na wakati huo ni wa Kenya 164 walikuwa wamepoteza maisha yao kwa ajili ya mafuriko sehemu mbalimbali za nchi yetu zile ambazo tumeelezwa kuna mvua siku ya leo siku wa kuamkia jana tumepoteza wa Kenya wengine 30 kwa masaa karibu 44 sasa wale wamepoteza maisha ni wa Kenya 194 194 lives have been lost sababu ya mafuriko haya leo niko hapa na mawaziri wenzangu kuhimiza tena tafadhali kama unaishi kando karibu na mto mto kama Nzuia Sabwani mto Nyando mto Tana na mito nyingine katika taifa letu zimefurika zimevunja ukingo na uko hatarini wewe na familia yako. Sikiza maelekezo umepewa na serikali kuu, serikali za county, ma county commissioners wetu na wataalamu uweze kuhamia sehemu zilizo salama. Wengi wamekuwa nauliza tunahamia wapi? Kule kwenye county commissioners wanajua ni wapi wanahamisha watu. Na zaidi kwa sasa wakati shule zimefungwa tumekuwa tunatumia hizi shule kuweza kuweka zile familia zimeathirika na mafuriko. Kwa hivyo mtahamishwa lakini ukifika kwa shule pia serikali itaendelea kupeana msaada kwako wewe na kwa familia yako. Kwa hivyo ukielekezwa tafali nenda pale kwa hizi shule tuko tunapeleka chakula kwa familia hizi. Vile vile Wizara ya Maji tunapeleka maji. Na Wizara ya Afya pia tumeomba ya kwamba must ziweze kupeanwa kwa kambi hizi ambazo tunawaathiriwa mbalimbali na hii ni mambo tunaendelea kufanya tumekuwa kule magharibi mwa Kenya kesho tunaelekea Garissa na tutakuwa pia Tanariva na maeneo ya pwani ili tuendelee kusaidiana na serikali za county kusaidia zile familia zimeathirika lakini kwa sasa tafadhali msipuuze ilani ambayo mmepokea siku ya leo asante Let me invite my colleague uh, CS um, CS um, Kachar 
to tell us about the situation of the hydro dams in the country. Well, uh, thank you, and good morning. As you have been told, hardly a month ago we were here, and uh, the situation at the moment is is serious. As my colleagues have said, the reservoir of Masinga, as per this morning, we have reached historical figure of 57.86 above the sea level. Maximum reservoir is 1056.5, so you can see it's above. So it is a serious issue, and we are telling the people who are downstream, Carissa, all the way to Tana River, things are worsening. They are not the same as we were here. So we are asking them to move. Let them not wait for water, because we, this is historical. 1057.86 is the highest ever since Masinga was built. Likewise, on the western part of Kenya Tarquel, we've also reached historical figure of 1139 meters above the sea level. The situation in Tarquel is Vaivasa or Masinga. We are telling the people who are moved closer to the dam upstream. This is not on the lower stream. Masinga is downstream. Tarquel is upstream. We are asking them to move urgently because as you've heard from the people who are looking at the wet weather, things are worsening. The rains are becoming heavy. So please, let's heed the advice from the experts and we move urgently. Thank you so much. Thank you, CS Kater. Let me invite CS uh, Cecilia Karioki for water and sanitation to tell us about the state of our water in the, in the country. Thank you very much, uh, CS uh, Tobiko, colleagues, uh, members of the Father State. Good morning. Um, as a result of what we have been told, uh, several impacts from a water perspective have happened. We have so far lost crop uh, running into 8 thousand acres, uh, particularly in the Yando area, that is rice, which was about to uh, mature. We have also found ourselves having infrastructure that was hitherto going to protect further movement, a backflow of water from Lake Victoria being washed away. And importantly, we have also seen out of uh, landslides which have been experienced, especially on the Abadea side, in the last five days, we have seen water scarcity, particularly into Nairobi via uh, Ngedo. That is where we transmit water coming into particularly Nairobi city. We have had similar effects in uh, Nyeri, water shortages in Nyeri town. We have similar shortages reported in Kisumu, but also in Nakuru because the infrastructure to deliver water has also been washed away. But uh, pipelines also clogged because the turbidity of the water has effectively meant the water flowing is uh, have mud and have water. Now the teams have moved to restore and unclog the distribution systems uh, with much success, but even as this is happening, we have upped our interventions by way of reorganizing and rationalizing the distribution of water, particularly in Nairobi. We have, and I believe as you came, you saw several boozers, water boozers, tracking water and moving water, and we have continued to keep the consumers um, alert of what is happening. We expect this uh, scarcity to continue in the coming five days, and that is why we appeal for water to be used in a rational manner, sparingly knowing that we have this temporary uh, problem. We have also moved in to position water tanks, particularly to the affected populations uh, that have been affected, and we have availed portable, clean water uh, in these uh, locations. So again, let's hit the call. Let's be as careful as we are being advised to be. Thank you. Thank you, Cecily. Uh, CS Musheru will tell us about the role, the central role of ICT in communication in the context of the situation we find ourselves in. Thank you very much, Waziri. 
Uh, good morning, media. Let me say I'm very pleased that you've all come today to listen to what uh, even my colleagues are here saying regarding the current challenges we're facing as a country. As you know, right now, flooding is, uh, is a big area. And uh, we are also seeing a lot of uh, infrastructure and lives uh, lost. And as a result, movement and many things are going to be a challenge. So mine is really to appeal to the media to continue to support the efforts that the government is putting in place so that uh, citizens are fully informed on all the dangers that the floods are uh, presenting and that they get to know in advance so that they are able to take uh, precautions and be able to move. You've seen in some places people are saying it's not raining here and therefore they are not moving and yet when it rains in the mountains, the floods come and they will sweep them away. So I'm really calling on media to really take care of uh, the information and ensure that our citizens get the right information at the right time. We've agreed with the Met Department that they are going to be publishing and presenting that information to you all on a daily basis. They may even do that uh, two or three times a day so that you're able to know very specifically which areas are being affected and which people should be able to move and then you're able to transmit that information to them very quickly. So I appeal to you to do the same even on social media and even all those on social media that are spending a lot of time uh, talking about many other things. Please alert people on the current dangers that we're having, both uh, COVID and now the flood situation that uh, we're facing so that we can be able to go together as a country and ensure that there's safety for everyone. Thank you. Right, I'm also just informed we are still using it. So one of the areas we've also decided we will do is that for all the displaced people that were taken to camps, other than giving them food, we are already uh, transferring cash directly to them so that they are able to use that money for the various things that uh, they use. At the moment, they are given mosquito nets, they are, they are given food and many other things. But if we give them cash, then they have more of an opportunity to decide for themselves how much uh, they want to spend on what, but at least it means they have more dignity and the economy continues to grow with the money that uh, they will get. So the cash transfers are already happening. We've already sent out to over 200,000 uh, families uh, across the country and we've included the people that are now being displaced and affected by the, by the floods. I want to thank the mobile operators for the support that they've been giving us in ensuring that we have the right data to reach out to them. So as we use technology, let's make sure we use it also to ensure we are communicating and informing people so that uh, as a country we can remain safe. Asante Nisana. Thank you, Joe. And uh, lastly, but not least, let me invite uh, CS um, Matiangi uh, to tell us about the security implication and as chair of the NDICC, the government coordinating mechanism in dealing with this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, colleagues from uh, the media, for uh, both turning up today and for the work that you consistently do to support our messaging and our communication with the rest of the country. Uh, my first point is that uh, effective this morning, we have raised the level of alert in the country uh, in relation to the flooding situation and uh, several other things that we need to do. We, uh, we have given instructions this morning to our regional security team in uh, northeastern and uh, in parts of uh, eastern and coast uh, to begin moving people. As I speak to you, we have an operation in uh, Tana River and an operation in Garissa. We are not waiting for people to be swept downstream. We are moving some people using uh, public resources, moving some people away from danger. And uh, that level of alert will remain raised uh, for the next as a week or two until we are satisfied that we are away from danger. Because you've heard my colleagues have said uh, the waters uh, in the dams have risen to unprecedented levels and we can anticipate clearly that if we do not move the populations we have along the waterways, we are going to have disaster. So I first of all want to appeal to the leaders and the people of Garissa and Tana River particularly government is doing what we must do and, and uh, please for those who like all the time saying that uh, it's not fair to push people out we do not have an option we are moving some people out by force we have instructed the county commissioners 
and the county security teams in Garissa and in Tanariva to move everyone uh, on those uh, ways away from there, even if it means putting them on lorries ourselves and getting them out of, uh, out, of, out of danger. We would not like to experience that kind of situation. Secondly, I would like to uh, ask uh, citizens of our great country, our fellow citizens, we want to be as polite and as persuasive as we can ever be. When, when we tell you things as government that this is dangerous for you, your health and the rest of all of us, it's important for people to obey this. There are parts of this country where now we are going to be forced to uh, sometimes apply a bit of force and move people uh, out of um, the areas they have decided to, to erect. This is science. This is not fiction. And it's not even politics. So that we spend time debating whether we should do it or we should not do it. Once we have been advised by uh, the MET people here, and you have heard all of them, we have been advised by our colleagues in the energy sector, you have heard the Minister for Energy, what follows is that we should move. And this also applies, since I have this opportunity, it also applies to what our colleagues at the Ministry of Health, led by our colleague, our Cabinet Secretary for Health, uh, Honorable Mutai Kawe, are telling us. We have been warned several times about our behavior, especially in certain estates uh, in Nairobi and in Mombasa. Government is putting forward scientific information. Let's change our behavior. Now, we are going to be forced to have to do certain things that even we ourselves as government did not want to do to secure the lives of our people and especially the lives of innocent uh, uh, Kenyans. Because clearly, some of us are indisciplined and, and they are very difficult to understand. I do not understand why people find it very difficult to just move. You are told uh, you are likely to be swept. And then it takes forever. That's why we have asked the county commissioners and the county security teams in Garissa and in Tana River particularly to immediately commence forceful movement of people who are in the way of danger. And we are going to continue to do that. And members of the public, please understand that we have come to that point and there are certain things that we have to do, how we have to do them. Because otherwise, we are going to endanger the lives of, uh, of, of uh, innocent people. Uh, I don't think there's anyone who wants to die, but you may end up placing uh, the lives of so many people at risk. What is going on in Old Town Mombasa, for example? We have restrained ourselves from, you know, applying force and doing certain things that we have to do. But uh, it's not even about our patience, it's about the lives of our people who live in these places. We cannot continue persuading some of us who do not want to live by very simple, straightforward instructions on what we need to do. Now, that time has come for us to be very honest with each other and be firm. We are not going to accept these kinds of things. I repeat this, we have raised the level of alertness across the country on these issues of uh, flooding, especially targeting the areas that uh, have been mentioned. So we've sent out a security cable this morning, raising up the level of alertness, and we are going to do this also in respect of other measures that we have to take uh, in respect of uh, COVID-19. But, but people need to understand one thing. We have a duty and a responsibility as government to protect the lives of our people. And we will do our work. We will not make excuses about it. We will do our work. Because continued persuasion, and when we're engaging in dialogue, doesn't seem to be giving us as uh, quick results as we hoped it was going to. So for those who are in the ways of danger, and I have pointed out particularly in Garissa and in Tanariva, we are moving you. We start moving before we come. We will have to ensure that you are safe. And then we are not going to spend so much time negotiating with you because we would rather negotiate with you when you are alive. And then we are going to ensure everybody gets out of the way so that we, 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 we sort our people out. The rest has been addressed by my colleagues. On behalf of um, our team, I would like to say that uh, we are going well with the coordination. We will ensure the food is available. We are supplying food and support uh, to areas that need this support. Our collaboration between the National Government Administration and County Administration is very effective 
we are in constant touch with the, the county governments that are involved and we are is satisfied that honestly devolution is working for us and the county governments are doing a fantastic job in coordinating with us uh, obviously and, and i think it's fair to be sincere on this issue obviously fellow kenyans look we're having these challenges our resources are going to be strained we are dealing with covid 19 we now have a, a you know flooding disasters to deal with our resources are going to be strained so if if we were cooperative, we probably would be able to move forward with less losses and less pressure on our resources. But, but let's, you know, public resources are not elastic. You know, we, 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 our resource constraints are going to be there because we are dealing with various challenges. So it requires all of us to be cooperative with the institutions and the agencies that we are working with. Natafadali, you know, to Zikizane, instead of being you know unduly difficult uh, when we talk about enforcing curfew enforcing movement our colleagues in the Ministry of Health are explaining to us what we need to do but there are still some of us who believe they have to behave in a, in a particular way so what options do you leave for us as government we have a responsibility to protect lives our patience is actually uh, running out on this issue we have restrained ourselves from applying methods we didn't want to but we are moving slowly but surely in that particular direction but anyway we'll do our best as we move forward god bless you and thank you so much and we wish everyone all the best as we carry on with this thank you thank you sir. Now you have an opportunity to ask a few questions uh, please when you get the opportunity do not forget your name and the media house that you represent but also keep them short and to the scope of today's briefing so that as many people as possible can get the opportunity going to go fast. Yes? Yes, my name is Rafael Madrid from Citizen TV. There's an issue with the land. The dike that was constructed were meant to protect the cushion the residents from being affected by the flood waters, but apparently that was not that is not the case. So what exactly is being done by the government um, in regards to the dike that actually meant to save or protect the residents? Thank you. I think I'll respond to the one of Budalangi because I've just come from there and uh, my colleague uh, CS Interior will respond to Kariobangi. For Budalangi, the floods are unprecedented. For the last 10 years, we have had dikes holding. That is why you've not been hearing of Budalangi for the last uh, 10 years or so because government constructed dikes there that have been holding. However, because of the rising water levels of Lake Victoria, there's a serious backflow and the heavy rains that have been going on uh, in the last uh, few weeks. These combined have actually weakened the dikes and the displacement you've seen in Bunyala South, Bunyala Central and West, moving the population to Bunyala North is because after all these years, the dikes broke just last week and everything is being done to restore these dikes and uh, my, my colleague, uh, uh, C.S. Uh, uh, Sisli Karioki, would uh, uh, elaborate on this. But the long-term solution, we already have the Loan Zoya project that started uh, uh, several years ago that will see $5 billion applied to this area. 
to build permanent dikes. These dikes alone will ensure that water in future, just the way the temporary dikes have held, the permanent dikes will be a permanent solution to the problem in Budalandi. But in Nyando, as you know, we have the Soin Koru Dam, and this is one issue that uh, we will soon be going to uh, Kisumu with the CS Karaoke to engage the county government because we are asking Kenyans, unless they give way, unless they give land for us to build dams to hold the water, for us to build dikes like in Budalangi, there are quite a number of families that have not given land for this period. They have been delayed. The National Land Commission has the money and the people have not moved. So that compensation process must be fast-tracked the dikes must be built. So in Koru, there was already money put aside several years ago. But the politics around there, people are not ready to move or to give land. But as we speak, permanent solution would be dams to hold the water, check dams along the major rivers, whether you're talking of Tana or Nzoya, and the dikes that we're already constructing. Thank you. I will ask the regional security team in Nairobi uh, today, in fact after this meeting, working with the uh, Nairobi Metropolitan Service and the others to give me an accurate picture on exactly uh, what is happening in Kariobangi. Then, then we can see what we can do about it. I, I, because what I, I am told is that a number of people, that, that land has all along been known to be uh, land meant for the expansion of the uh, sewage project. And uh, even those who lived there knew actually that they were illegally occupying the land. And what I was told as late as last night is that many of those who occupied the land left on their own volition once they were given notice uh, to get out of the place. But uh, we are responsible as, as public administrators and as public leaders. I will ask the regional security team uh, to give me a report on, on Kariobangi later this afternoon, and I will look at it with uh, my colleagues and see how to address the matter. But since I have this opportunity, I need to say this. And uh, on this particular one, uh, fellow Kenyans, uh, there's a dimension about our life that is just amazing. The, the level of uh, sometimes hypocrisy with which we live on some of these things, and for those of us in, in, in leadership, you're always faced with this very difficult situation. There are several government and public sector projects to be implemented. Uh, you know, uh, I chaired the committee that was put up by the president on project implementation, and one inhibition and one challenge we are facing across the country in the implementation of projects is the amount of public land that has been grabbed by private individuals. And believe it or not, and I want to ask you, my brothers and sisters from the fourth state, to also do your homework and know how much money, uh, either in cases where we have even borrowed uh, money as, as government to use to develop projects which we cannot develop because the land on which some of these projects are supposed to be developed has been grabbed by, by private individuals or encroached by people. And we cannot move. We, we have uh, resources in our books to implement programs, but you cannot implement the program because the, 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 the land has been encroached or the land has been stolen by private individuals. The last time, I am informed by my colleagues uh, you know, in the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, that the last time anybody paid serious attention to Nairobi's uh, uh, sewerage program is 1936. And look at how the population in Nairobi has grown. And the reason why this has not happened is that everywhere you go, uh, in the case of Nairobi, where you're supposed to do this expansion, the land has actually been grabbed or it has been taken by private individuals. And people know this. B people are told this in advance. You are actually uh, 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 sitting on public land. There's a project that is terminating here. Uh, we may be able to, you know, probably open up and then and, and, uh, and, and pump sewage in this direction. People know this, but then either people don't move or they just continue staying there. I don't know, you know, what we are supposed to do as public leaders. Are we supposed to, people are told a year in advance, six months in advance, five months in advance, then they will still come back later on and say, oh, we were not warned, we were not given enough notice, and so on and so forth. This is a matter on which I would like, A, that we be absolutely transparent with you. And we are going to start a system where we even avail some of these project documents to you as the media and you look at them. 
some agreements that were reached long time ago on projects that cannot be implemented because the land has been encroached on, people have stolen uh, 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 you know, public land and so on and so forth. So we will deal with the issue of Karyobang. I will uh, ask the RC and the team to look into that matter and, and understand and figure out how we are going to help the Wananchi who are involved in that matter because some of them, to be fair actually, are innocent uh, people who have been misled by you know by land grabbers and by criminals in our midst so so we will try to resolve that problem but i want to plead with you that while we solve that problem also join us in asking all of us to be cooperative with the government because sometimes government finds itself in a very difficult situation you have borrowed and organized uh, you know a facility from the african development bank to expand a particular project you cannot proceed because there are people who grab the land and they are sitting on it it, it, through the process of discussion, people are told they are involved, but it's always easy for people to claim, oh, we were not told, we were not given sufficient notice. This is not the right time for us to move out of the, the place, and so on and so forth. Some of these, to be very honest, absolutely honest, some of these are just excuses. Let us just face the truth. There's work we need to do for our country, and uh, it's unfortunate that sometimes innocent people suffer in this process. But we will do the best we can to address the plight of some of our people. Uh, some who are innocent caught in this uh, kind of situation. But it's not that we are doing it as an unfeeling and caring, irresponsible government. Sometimes we also find ourselves in this very painful situation where you have a project to proceed and complete, but at the same time, you know, there are innocent people who are sold public land and they were brought in that respect. So we will work together with the regional security team to address that issue of uh, Karyobangi and I will ensure that working with the rest of my colleagues in the team, we will sort it out and we will try the best we can to alleviate the burden and the pain of our people. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you, members of the for coming for this meeting. Again, uh, yeah, we're having another one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>